EDM is eating yeah. dangerous <laughs> meat. Meals. Meats. Yeah, meals. meals. <laughs> <I> <laughs> eating like dangerous meals. meals up close <laughs> on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> To the Emino Show with Aaron Bodie. <laughs> I sound like an NPR. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I almost fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> I am asleep. Well, welcome, Aaron. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much, John. Thanks for yeah. having me, you guys. Yeah. yeah. Is this this is your first time at Tarantula Hill? It is. It is. But I'm I feel very welcomed, and I'm excited about what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. We've done our job already. Yeah. So. Uh, Get John up to speed a little bit on kind of your background music. Yeah, well, so I've I've been a musician for I guess over 20 years. I'm I studied music in school and um, signed with a, a small jazz label nice. when I was in my mid 20s. Um, and then I was also with a, a small label out here in California, in Southern California, um, uh, a, a label called Native Language. And um, I've just been, you know, touring, making recordings, um, doing some teaching, uh, and now I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm doing it all over again. Nice. Yeah, just making my way with music. It's it's a challenge, but it's my, you know, my favorite thing. So. So prior to Nashville, you were in St. Louis. Yes, yeah, so I was What brought in St. you Louis. to St. Louis? Well, I went to college there, and um, I just kind of started out my career there. And um, the first label that I mentioned of uh, Max Jazz that I was with was uh, based in St. Louis. Um, but I found, you know, it's kind of, it's very centralized, and I was just doing a lot of touring anyway. So it was kind of nice to have a home base that was comfortable and, and very easy to live in, and, and we would travel from there so we could go, you know, anywhere. Right. So right. It's, it was a nice place to live for a while. I'm really grateful that I did. So what part of the music do you like the most? Like the songwriting, the performing? The I think every aspect has something that I, I really do enjoy. Um, I've, I've always written songs and contributed it to my albums and everything over the years. And so I, that's, that is one of my favorite parts. I, I really like that creative process. But, um, and I, I love performing live. It, each, each aspect of, of kind of having to be a musician, like especially a independent musician um, is a completely different world, you know? And right. a lot of times they don't really go together, especially when you're trying to do your own marketing or, or you know, build your website or um, do all your own promotion. That is a different hat than writing a song or performing at a venue, you know? So it can be a little bit, you know, challenging to be able to do all those things, but yeah. Oh, so we got some beer coming in. Oh, my goodness. Let's drink some beer. Wow. Um, these are flights. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Alex. This is great. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Once they're down, they're difficult to maneuver. <coughs> yeah. I'll, be, I'll do my best. Okay. This Thank looks. You. This looks a little bit not. I've never used one of these before, but this this item here with the glasses and it looks a little bit like that thing that you move around on a Ouija board. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, like what, what is the name of that thing? I have no idea. I just, watched, I, I've I never just watched that movie called Ouija, and they Ooh. they said the word, and now I don't remember. Okay. It. Well, first you'll notice each quadrant yes. has a letter, it has a T, yeah, a H, C. a B, uh -huh. and a C. Mm -hmm. yours, yours is sideways. So okay. Yeah. It the right All right. Way. And it stands for Tarantula Hill before Christ. <laughs> 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 no, Tarantula Hill Brewing Company. That's old. Yeah. <laughs> Very old. Yes. It's, um, it's a different Christ. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wow. And so there's He's much younger. <laughs> it's John Christ. He's, he's my next door neighbor. <laughs> um, and so there's two tarantula hill beers, and okay. there's two guest beers. Okay. And so we're going to. The, the T and the H go together, right? Those yep. are the tarantula hill? Yes. Uh, no, you oh, we're not we going to let know. you know. We don't know. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. John knows. Yes. Um, 
He has a list, and he's going to slide it to me, slide now, too. Well, um, so you're going to... I should have tried to do it before. Without. And so you're going to try the T and the H, okay. and then you're... See which one you think is the tarantula hill beard. There's one, and then there's another one in the B and the C Okay, category. so between these two, yeah. there's yeah, one. That's where we're going to start. These, okay. We're starting with these two. <laughs> okay. Left and right, I guess. There, but. Okay. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was a good what sound. Do you, what, do you, mm, what are you mm. tasting in the first one? Um... I think it's a pilsner, maybe, <laughs> but at least this one is, uh, and it's very, it's very refreshing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the second one's quite complex. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Mm. So I should go back and forth between them just to make sure that I. Get yeah. all my yeah. all yeah. the information. J John, maybe you can ans answer the question too. Do you what do you prefer doing, writing, music, or performing? Which is like what's tough tough question. <coughs> I think I would have answered pretty pretty much the same. I, I love elements of both. Um, um, live is like a, you know performing live is there's definitely like an adrenaline rush aspect of it you know that um yeah that you crave mm -hmm. you know what do you mean you crave like it's addicting it's like a drug yeah it's like a drug yeah attention is a drug yeah it is <laughs> it's the attention and the energy and is it like your phone's blowing up kind of attention no better different no, yeah. cause that could that could be like you know debt collectors or something <laughs> that's not the same kind of thing <laughs> right um and also there's like every show has challenges that you have to overcome sort of, you know, as you like, and then, um, you know, cause you want to, you want to please everybody in the crowd, you know, and you will you like find someone like, oh, that guy doesn't look like he's having fun. How do I, <laughs> how do I get that guy? You know? That's awesome. Tell me about your music. I want to know like, um, our music is, your background is, a, is like multi-genre. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, like it kind of it's it's basically we kind of wanted to do you know have like a heavy reggae influence yeah. but reggae is generally a slow tempo mm -hmm. not the most ideal for live music um <clears throat> so we wanted to be more up tempo but not turn into ska yeah I, yeah i can yeah so yeah so we incorporated <laughs> other elements of other genres and whatnot um so which is which is like you know it's fun, party. Um, we try to write in a major, you know, write major, mm -hmm. but then have like contrasting kind of dark lyrics. Yeah. You oh, know? Yes, I love. The, oh, that's great. I love the contrast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it makes people it or forces them to listen. Yeah, exactly. Or if we do something more minory, then it'll be like subliminally a happy song. I don't know. That's that doesn't great. always work, but. <laughs> and why is that? You just wanted to I do don't know. that. Yeah, just yeah, just or it just happened. It was it was a very deliberate. No, it was very deliberate. Yeah, it was like because at the time when we started, the genre was new metal, mm. right? So it was like Limp Bizkit and Corn, mm. and I kind of felt like metal had ran its course because I'd been listening to metal since I was, you know, yeah. a little kid. And I was like, yeah, metals, I don't know, like, aren't we, can we move on from metal, right. you know? <laughs> but then they were incorporating with hip hop, which I loved. I mean, I loved that I mean, genre. you tried out for a metal band in high school. I did try out for a metal band, and I wanted to rap. Do you and remember? They, did, so they didn't want to do that. I, they didn't. Do you remember the name of the metal band? <laughs> yes, it was um, Schizotic. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's great. And I think later on they became Schizo. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Are they still around? Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Still, they still need a singer. <laughs> so I, I'm tr we're trying to play together. Oh, that's great. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, and I felt like we wanted to do. I don't know. We, I don't. We weren't trying to fit into the time, I guess. But I felt like if we, if there was some sort of contrast for that, like we were definitely the black sheep of the genre. So hmm. I don't know if that made sense. As a jazz singer, though, I mean, you probably you probably try to write right in the pocket of that, right? Or, or well, 
You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, even at the very beginning, when I was really, I was emulating some of my favorite singers, I was, um, you know, I was kind of honing the jazz standard repertoire, which, you know, like you have to know that stuff. It's just, it's some of the greatest music ever written. And so I was spending a lot of time in that area, but I, when I wrote things, and especially I was writing with a, a piano player, a really great piano player, Adam Manis, and we would, we just, you know, kind of see what comes out. And we're so, you know, we were fresh and <laughs> younger <laughs> in our 20s. And we weren't, you know, what came out of us was just not going to be like Irving Berlin. It just couldn't be because right. our whole experience was, yeah, there was jazz, of course, because we were studying it. But but it was also what we heard on the radio and and folk music that our parents listened to. And, and so I just... I'd, I never have wanted to force it or make it in, in any way contrived. I just wanted it to be whatever came out. Yeah. And hopefully it'll reflect what I love, and then hopefully other people will like it too. So that's just kind of how, how it kind of ended up. So I think when you listen to my original music, it's, it's like a little combination between a few things. And, you know, I'm yeah. cool with that. <clears throat> I was never, like, needing to be part of a specific genre. Mm. You know, I just I just want to work <laughs> and make music. That's really all I care about. So <laughs> that's interesting because that parallels kind of like what we talk about when we were talking about reggae, mm -hmm. right? Like <clears throat> you can be basically any non-Jamaican mm -hmm. and attempt to do reggae, but it's never going to be reggae. It's never going to be reggae. That wasn't Ever. your experience. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's what's so unique about reggae. And it's, it's literally you would have to be from Jamaica to make true reggae mm -hmm. so everything else is just a version of it even if you know there's a million you know, whatever and, and it's also like um i worked with a singer and um that's weird it's, it's hard to say what i'm gonna say without like using certain words that like might be considered racist but i don't know and there was a time when you could say all these things i don't even <laughs> know if i should say but um like r&b for example as a genre like there's only you know like I can say this, I suppose, like a white person can't do R&B. Mm. You just can't. For different kind of reasons than Jamaica, but, um, um, or reggae, I should say, but, um, yeah, and it's weird. I don't like, know, like a, a Sam Smith can s sure seem to do <coughs> R&B. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, I mean, it's what, it, what, it, what are the, what's, like, the roots of rhythm and blues? Mm -hmm. Like, the core, like, what's the core, like did like when you really break it back down i mean like even like i suppose you would say like um who's the child molester guy michael jackson <laughs> no the <laughs> other one <laughs> okay that is r well, kelly r kelly thank you oh my wow that, I just, mean, that was i, I was like uh, I, I don't rather, have i don't have a list have, i would rather not have toned in at that point that was not <laughs> great, not great thanks josh i'm glad this is being recorded love, did you say what is r kelly <laughs> well, like like is, what is R. Kelly? Yeah, the yes, Jeopardy it was like the Jeopardy answer. That was amazing. <laughs> um, like R. Kelly is R and B, right? Right. But like, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a bad example. But I, I think, I think, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's that was amazing. That you I, said think it's, Michael I think it's still true, <laughs> though. I, I think it, this comes up a lot in our conversations. Actually, yeah. is that you have to be authentic, or yes. it just will never work. Exactly. Right. Like you can have influences, but I think. If you're not authentic, yeah, people I mean, can tell. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Knowing who yep. you are is always going to serve yeah, you really exactly. well. You know, and I think that's why there's so there's these artists that just, you know, they're big and bold and they go out there. And a lot of people will say, "Well, that's just who they are." You know, like right. it's, it, it's yeah. attractive. It's that confidence and that self-assuredness that comes with knowing who you are is yeah. is very attractive. And it's like you know, people want to know more. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be like because people often ask like what you love jazz jazz is an influence mm -hmm. it's probably your main influence but um yeah you just do what's like real to you and like if uh, obviously other things are influencing it you're where you're from yeah exactly. who you are mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so yeah yeah all right t and h which one do you think is the tarantula hill beer um i'm gonna go with h Interesting. I don't know. You called that this was the Pilsner. 
Yes, I did. And we already told you. I thought oh, for sure you were getting Oh, one of them was going to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, you weren't supposed to give we, me any hints anyway. I, I know, but I already, I felt like I already set you up. But okay. I, but every time Sorry. I feel like John, I did. You know, it's funny. Every time we do this, <laughs> I couldn't John, really re- John always basically tells the answer. <laughs> okay. Well, I couldn't, every really, time. I couldn't really remember if you were saying, because uh, then you said there would be two others. Gotcha. And you said something about they're not, whatever's not a Pilsner. Yes. Did you say oh, that? Maybe you did get, get you confused. I did confuse you. Yeah. But, you know, that's okay. It's no. good that I, <laughs> this is a quiz. So. So, yeah. so what was the guest beer? The guest beer on this one was Ennegrin Light. And it's, um, it's an anniversary beer for them. Mm-hmm. I believe it's their 11th anniversary. Oh, um, romantic. Where's, there, where's that brewery out of? They're in Moore Park. Oh, they're close. Yes, they're very close. They only do German-style beers. So they don't. Is it do fickle? What is it? It's. Um, I think it's just a lager. Hmm. It's just a light lager. Um, Why do they only do German? Is it? That's just their deal. They don't do IPAs at all. Okay. Hmm. Um, they make every beer they make is really good. Um, yeah. They're this both one. amazing. Yeah. I'm. S- yeah. So yeah, this is our. I really mm-hmm. like pilsners. So yeah, this was. Uh, <laughs> so this is one of the ones that you have on the table right here. Yeah, the tarantula one. Which this one? is this one here. This is the the. Uh, With the rabbit. The pilsner, yeah. Classic check. This is just called Canejo Pilsner. We're in the Canejo Valley. Yeah, Canejo. the Rabbit Valley. Yep. Yes, the Rabbit yep. Valley. Mm-hmm. Um. So right. yeah, it is not actually. <clears throat> It's kind of, you know, another, again, it was just, it's like a kind of a weird comp, obviously, because this is, um, like you said, there's, there's like more complexity mm. going here. This is, this is us trying to make a basic Pilsner. It's like, good. It's like uh, inspired by hams. And mm. <laughs> well, you know what I like about this <coughs> quiz is that it's not a taste test, like which one do you prefer? Right. Because exactly. if you ask me which one I preferred, it would be the Pilsner, because I, I love Pilsner, first of all. And it's just very good. Yeah. So I can lose the quiz if it means that yeah. I get to tell there's you which no one losing. I prefer. You're yeah, there's always no losing. Yes, exactly. In yeah. This, yeah, in this competition, everybody wins. That's right. That's true. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, and this one, yeah, it's <laughs> very clean, refreshing. Um, yeah, and this one's amazing, too. Well, let's, let's, right, let's jump move into on the to next. To the BC. Next. Okay, now, uh, yeah. just, just before we even do this, Yes. is it true that you didn't tell me anything about this? Set I up did here. not. I almost was about to tell okay, you something. Good, because I want to have, a, a, want to have not forgotten or screwed up what you told me. I was me. about to say something. I was like, "Yep, yeah, that would be another clue." Okay, so <laughs> if, you, if you watch John closely when he drinks <laughs> <Yeah>. the beer, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm I'm giving away clues all the time. So, uh, behind the scenes, we don't really catch it on the show, but I shame John between every episode okay. about yes. how he gives clues about what we're drinking. Yeah. And I think we could have a nice highlight reel someday we if we should, caught we it. Should. That yeah. would be great. And then going. people yeah. getting confused. Okay. So this is the B1? Yep. Mm. That's the B4. Can you slime me that card? And this is Christ. <laughs> wow, that's good. Can we see it again? I forgot what that one was. <laughs> this one is actually, I'm not going to say wow. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got that little <laughs> shot of Jeff's face. <laughs> Hopefully that's what the camera was I'm like, on. you got it. <laughs> me. Wait, oh, when you looked at it? <laughs> no, no, I was John about was to r- give you a clue. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> Sorry. I shot daggers well, at hurry, John. Hurry up and hurry up this, and let's do it. Because this is so important. Are we supposed to talk? Oh, wait, <laughs> no, to let's do this before I, ca- okay. I, can't, uh, before uh, I yeah, stick you're my foot in my mouth. Okay, so if, so if that one, the Pilsner, was yes. yours, and then the, that means the double IPA is also yours. <laughs> yes. Right? I'm looking at the, your label right there. Okay, yes. so if I have to pick the double IPA, then well, it's... Well, can, can I say this then? These no, are, don't. These are both doubles. They're both doubles. They're they both are? double IPAs, yes. Oh, come on. Yeah. All right. Okay. We did that right. Good job. Okay. All right. Then I have to taste them again. Okay. But. <laughs> <laughs> is there any is there any information on that okay. can? Okay. Okay, Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> it's green. Ours is. As, are those hopped? Double leaves dry or hopped. Double dry hopped. So basically, I'll tell you, 
nothing to do with this, but our batch, our batch O2 double IPA was the second batch of beer we ever made. And, um, and then right, we put it out to a contest and won uh, silver medal. That's wow. crazy. Yeah. Second batch. Second batch. Oh. So we named the beer Batch O2. I would have gone triple okay. o- O's too, just because, I mean, you kind of limited O's. yourself to only <laughs> making 999 beers. <laughs> On the wall. Beers on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this is a, a newer version of it where we, they double dry hopped it. Okay. Um, and wow. also the way that they dry hop this one um, is an interesting process. Okay. They do a little bit different. Uh, what, what but I won't, I won't try to explain it because oh. I'll mess it up. But oh. um, <coughs> yeah, that's what I'll tell you about that one. All so right. if, uh, if it, the double dry hopped... <coughs> is not going to give that away for you on these. So that's okay. why I felt right. pretty comfortable explaining right. that. But Well, do you, you already know. He yeah. knows, yes, because okay. you okay. saw the card. But Yes, okay. Well, this is gonna, probably going to reveal how little I know about double IPAs, but I'm just going to go with this one as yours. That one is, this is the Tarantula Hill. Man. Man. Okay, so I'm just terrible. But at this it was kind of, what I was gonna say is <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. It's kind of a trick question, question. because this is a Trangelo Hill collab, so oh, they collaborate. Okay. Yeah. These right. are technically both. You Trangelo. couldn't go wrong. You couldn't oh, go wrong. Well, on that one. thanks, so, guys. So yeah. you were right. That was very <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. So this is Bottle Logic, <laughs> which is an amazing brewery in Anaheim. Okay. Um, they s- they are most they're. They're very well known for their uh, barrel aged stouts. Yeah, is what they do. So I was wondering, does the, does the the color or the the uh, uh, what do you the vis- not viscosity? Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> the opaqueness or um, whatever. Yeah. Translucence. Well, does that, that have something to do with it? That is what's pretty amazing about our batch O2 is that that it is a double and it's it's still pretty clear. That clear yeah. and it also you can't like the alcohol. It smells so good. I always, I always identify double IPAs or IPAs in general. They smell like pine trees. Yeah. And this smells like a forest. Yeah, that is pretty foresty. Mm-hmm. This one as well. Yeah. Anyways, so by default, you couldn't go wrong. This on smells that like one. a Christmas tree lot. This yeah. smells like a forest. <laughs> is it okay if I distinguish? Sure. Yeah. It's a little more, like candy. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> oh, they're so they're both really good. Cool. This one is there's a little it's like a little smoky flavor. Yeah, definitely. What's going on in there? Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of like smoky alcohol. No, no, no. Are yeah. you? Are you guys? I had smoked tequila once. Mm-hmm. Mezcal. Yeah, mezcal. mezcal. Yeah. It was like super smoky. I think I, I think I'm, I think I screwed <laughs> up. And mm-hmm. made that air like six, seven times before I, and oh, I always would Google yeah, it. Exactly. I'm like, what is in this? And I'd, I'd Google yeah. it, and I'd, and then I'd have it, and I'd be like, oh, I don't like yeah. this at all. Yeah, but I agree. I'll, I, yeah, I'm not a fan of the smoked. Mm-mm. No, spicy. but this, is, this seems like a natural smoke, like spicy. like it, like you this know, is, the yeah. pine, the pine trees, or whatever, or maybe the hops that you know, like they went through a forest fire or something. You know, like in the distance, like they just <laughs> kind of experienced the. That's that's interesting. That could be, that could be a thing. <laughs> I'm totally making this up. I have no <laughs> idea. And you just gave me like really high alcohol content beers. Yes. And then asked me to talk about them. So. I want to talk about your song. <laughs> okay, great. Can you talk about yes, your of song? Course I can, yes. John knows nothing about this. I want to explain what you're okay. doing with your song. Yeah, so um, it was probably 2017. I was doing a gig at um, the, the really great jazz club in um, St. Louis called, well, they just call it Jazz St. Louis now, but it, we've always called it Jazz at the Bistro. That's what it used to be called. And um, there was a guy that came up to me afterwards, uh, after our gig, and he said, uh, I'm wondering if you can help me with something. My wife and I are about to celebrate our 10th wedding anniversary, and we have a favorite song, and I would really like to be able to give her a version of the song that is just for her. So would you arrange it and record it for me that I can give it to her as a gift? And it would be, you know, like Aaron Bodie's version of this is for you. Right. And I was like, that is the most incredible idea. I mean, it was it sort of like hit me like lightning, you know, like everyone needs their own version of their favorite song or their yeah. own song. Right. And so, yes, right away I did it. 
and I gave it to him. And so then I just started talking about it at gigs, like, you know, I've been, I've been doing this for people. And, and so then I had a guy come up to me after another gig and he said uh, that he had been writing love poems for his wife for years and years. And there was one in particular he thought. Wait, is that something you're supposed to be doing? Yes, Jeff. <laughs> that, this is also why I'm telling this part of the story. Is that all men John, need to hear this? We're failing. <laughs> it's okay. You're still young. I looked over no. at you and you're like, yeah. No. I was now like, this, what? No. You're doing it too? <laughs> no. This man is in his 70s. So okay. you guys we have got, a, time. You got gotcha. plenty of time. <laughs> and you need to hone your poetry skills. But he had been writing all these poems and he said, there's one in particular. I just think it would make a good song. Would you be willing to take this? And I said, of course I will. And I was just about to go to a writing session uh, with Victor Krauss in Nashville. And, you know, we... We just would write whatever, but I, I thought, well, I'll just take this with me. And I kind of came up with a melody, you know, beforehand. And then he put chords to it. I think in 45 minutes we had this song finished. And then we recorded it. And, and uh, it's become one of our favorite songs. I wow. put it up, So I've, I've been doing What's this for song? people. It's called The Moon Is Ours Tonight. Okay. I actually just recorded a version in Spanish also. Oh, wow. wow. really? Yeah, that's a really delightful story. But That's for his... Um, his side chick. <laughs> <laughs> for his, so his 68 year old side chick. <laughs> he always speaks Spanish. You know what's funny is that he and his wife actually have this like, they wrote a book and like a program on how to keep romance in your marriage, you know, throughout nice. your marriage. And so they're like super monogamous. Like, oh, that's not right. even I thought you were going to say they're super about having a side chick. No, like, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> That's not one of the okay, things gotcha. that John, they recommend. John, you trying to make this a thing? Yeah, they don't <laughs> yes. recommend that. <laughs> they don't recommend. They don't it. recommend. No, it. that's not part of the book. <laughs> There's no chapter on oh, like okay. paramours. Um, <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> like they, um, but yeah, they're they were just a super sweet couple, and so anyway, it just became a thing. I started talking about people about this to people and telling right. them, you know, this is an option for you. Do you have a new baby? Uh, when's your birthday? You know, that kind of thing, and and people. Well, this sounds like. So, like, mm. knowing your music and, like, what you actually can do mm -hmm. um, versus, like, things that I see out there, like, um, there's, there's like, marketplaces now. Yes, exactly. Right, where yeah. people can, like, hey, I want a song made, but it's, it's kind of like Upwork. Yeah. Where it's kind of yeah. like, hey, can anybody yeah. just write me a song? And, like, fiber. But, I mean, but I'm like, if someone came to you guys and said, write me a song, I'm like... Well, it, yeah. are you, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot more high end what you're asking. It's like, right. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted to be able to offer people is, you know, I'm going to talk to you. We're going to, I'm I want to hear your story. I want to know you. And I want to know how you want this to play out in your lives. You right. know? Hello, chef. Hello. Oh my God. Call in the chef. What? what do we have here, chef? We have the uh, breakfast pizza. Breakfast pizza. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that is amazing. Can Those you? eggs look amazing. So, wow. So what was on it again? It was okay, so avocado. say again. Avocado, spinach, chili verde. Salsa verde. Salsa, Salsa verde. verde, sorry. Anduya. Anduya. Mm. Anduya yeah, sausage. sausage. Mm -hmm. yeah. and what were the eggs? Yeah. Chino Valley eggs? Chino Valley eggs. Chino Valley eggs. What kind of cheese? Mozzarella. Mozzarella. Normal uh, tomato sauce? No sauce. No sauce. No sauce. It's breakfast pizza. Breakfast pizza. We are gonna start. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yes. Is there a Go certain ahead. way that you eat Grab a, 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 a pizza with eggs on it? Yeah. Yeah. You get your slice and you yeah. Can I? I, I probably spread should the spread the yolk a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah or uh, you, you can. Poke, or you can just take a yolk. piece and just start dunking in it, whatever you All want. Right. But we're sharing, Have so it's a little different. Have you seen the color of this yolk? And it came out yeah. this idea of chorizo and eggs. Chorizo and eggs is the inspiration. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. this a little bit. Oh, that's cool. so wow. that we all get some. Nice. And then you guys can do that with your egg. <laughs> cool. We need to get the uh, the over the overhead table camera going. Yeah, that's what we gotta uh, get. yeah for the food, yes. food hang segment. Just take that whole thing. That's, oh my God, that's a top. whole piece? Sure. What? Go for it. This is Tarantula this is Hill. Too much. Big yeah. pieces. <laughs> this is too much, you guys. Um, Here, I'll take that one. Thank you. Um, and we are, we're going to, we're oh, going to be, two uh, pieces, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this is for our Sunday during, during football season. Oh, Sunday brunch. 
Wow. You know, we have the games, the 10 a.m. games. People are going to go nuts. Yeah. So that's the uh, the idea of this one. I'm just going to dunk mine. I'm going to dunk mine into the yoke. You're going to dunk it? Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Let's see if I can. I'm going to try to be like. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I shouldn't have done adult that. Adult about this. I lost it. All right, let's see. You guys. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you're never supposed to eat on camera. Am I right, Anna? That's what we'll, <laughs> we'll blur you out while you Please eat. Please do, yes. <laughs> like I'm committing some sort of crime or something. That's, that's how it should no, look. No, it's funny. <coughs> we taste the beers, when we're which are the tarantula beers. Yeah. I eat this, and I'm like, oh, this is very tarantula tasting to me. Yeah. But it's breakfast. The only time I'm not here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, this Very is incredible. Good. That's amazing, Chef. Mm. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Oh, this is really good. Before we go any further, can we get um, that guest mic a little bit towards you? It, it, it popped into frame, into Jeff's frame. Mm. Oh. Move it back a little bit. Like this way? Perfect. Okay. You can you can uh, tilt the the head of it too if you want to point oh. more to do. This way. I don't think it moves. Oh, okay. oh it does. Should be yeah. Okay. Is that good? Because cool. you want to make sure you can hear all of my eating. <laughs> right. People love that. Well, you want to make sure the mic was low enough so you can mm -hmm. see you like put it in your mouth and you know <laughs> munch on it. I know that people you know they like to hear things close mic. That's like a thing you know. Yeah. What is it called? I know some anagram. ASMR. EDM. Eating. <laughs> <laughs> Electronic dance <laughs> eating. Uh, no, what is that called, Josh? It's Munching. ASMR. ASMR. What's that stand for? Oh, Asymmetric. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sonic is, uh, rhythms. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. EDM is eating yeah. dangerous <laughs> meat. Meals. Meats. <laughs> yeah, meals. meals. <laughs> eating like dangerous meals, meals <laughs> up close <laughs> on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> We got an answer in. It's automatic sensory meridian response. Oh, oh I was so close. It, was that from Was that from one of our callers? That was from. Uh, <laughs> no, that was from my brain. <laughs> wow! Oh my goodness, <laughs> your brain. <clears throat> I'm gonna have some more of this amazing. But the, but the thing is, I think that this this technique, you know, the ASMR, is um does, is supposed to make you like relax and fall asleep. <laughs> People are not yes. gonna want to sleep to my chewing. <laughs> I, I try to be careful. I'm a, I'm a fast eater. Um, growing up, my brother would always like point out uh, that I'd be smacking when I'd eat cereal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I have to admit that every time my kids are eating cereal, I hear it now. Mm. Yes. And I want to say something, but mm -hmm. yep. I don't want to inflict the damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My dad, you know, would always notice something like creaking in the car or a squeak in the car, and I am that guy now. Yeah. My kids are crawling around the car trying to figure out, like, if it was a seat belt or something. And I just know exactly what I'm doing to them, that they're going to be the exact same way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Yep. It's, it's a coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> it could be good, could be bad. <laughs> um, so John, tell me, tell me a little bit about Tool. Okay. Oh tool. So they, so this Aaron can kind of understand. That's a what, good segue. Yeah, from Aaron what you can kind of. Exactly, that's what I was kind of mm -hmm. thinking too. Passing it down, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd give a high level on this. Um, tool is theory of overall logic. Oh my. <laughs> mm -hmm. Aaron's like, I don't think I'm ready for this. I'd, so yeah, <laughs> we're eating breakfast pizza and drinking beer. beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, like. It's the kind of the lost art of um, common sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, right? I can get behind that. Yeah. So um, things that basically um, were passed on to us and that we're passing on to the, the generation behind us. Mm -hmm. But basically, and then the reason why it's tool is just basically, you know, tools that... John's into acronyms, that's why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's I kind like of that. My, my thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so like tools that basically, um, that we kind of build in our brains to, you know, just succeed or survive, um, in life. And, um, 
and um, I think we all operate by some sort of like methodology, right? Yeah. Like we yeah. learn something, and then we it, it works, and then you just start using it. We see it in jujitsu all the time. That yeah. blue belt that gets that leg lock, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, I'm just going to do these all the time," and they yeah. kind of go that direction. Exactly. But I think it's the same in, in life. It's mm -hmm. like you learn your lesson, and you're like, "Oh," and you try it, and you're like, "Oh, that worked." Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. It worked, and you keep on yep. doing it over and over again. Yeah. And anything that you, you know, like they say, anything you do 10,000 times, you become a master. Mm. So there's things like, <clears throat> and un unfortunately, there's things that you're doing wrong that you become a master of in life. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you do, you do. <laughs> habits. <laughs> yeah. You be Bad they become habits. habits and you become like a master <laughs> of doing shit wrong. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. And I feel like, I think, you know, a, you know, we t what we talk about a lot is that like, basically like, I think generationally um the generation you know my parents generation um there there was a kind of an understanding that basically you had to teach your kids these kind of basic tools yeah. in life mm -hmm. and then kind of then you send your kids off to school and they learn how to read and write and do math yes right yeah <clears throat> and then mm -hmm. the idea of common sense was <coughs> It, they started saying when my generation came around, like you see, like you know, some kids are smarter than others, mm. but um, in life that doesn't necessarily have to be a deciding factor on whether you're successful or not. Of course not. But if you were not picking things up as fast as say your sibling or another mm -hmm. kid or whatever, then they're like, ah, common sense, you got it or you don't. Yeah. So then they stopped deliberately teaching things that were considered common sense. So that's mm -hmm. why I feel like we have to rename the word common sense because yeah. it has the word common exactly, in it. Exactly, which sense it's in not. It which is not right. Mm -hmm. So there's you're basically these tools. And then now our society, I feel like has like a, a dysfunctional um, sort of codependent relationship with like f just sticking like, you know, government and school and everything, whatever. So like school. So I think now like parents kind of feel like, Oh, we just send our kids to school and they teach them everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. They're not like, Oh sure. Yeah. Sex ed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All, right? the, all the things. Yeah. Those are the things that we don't want to have com conversation with our kids about. So yeah. like, Oh, we'll let the school do it, but yeah. that's not their job. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you do, if the they are, job is not to parent the kid. Yeah, exactly. It's not to parent. Just teach them, basically teach them tools, yeah. how to use whatever, but those are separate tools. This is a different set of tools that like we should be focusing on, on like whether you have kids you know, you're teaching your kids or if you're, you know, like if you're our generation, you're maybe you're in a management position or you're running a business or you're, you know, you're teaching other other people, whatever, like what are these things? Um, yeah, so that's kind of that that idea. Um, and it's become sort of a like a and then it's also like, you know, you obviously one of the one of the main things is that you learn in context. Mm -hmm. Right. So like but now we we kind of just assume that yeah. they have the context, right? But then, then you start teaching, think, and clearly they don't. So where do we? How far back do we have to go to like lay it out? Like, right. okay, now do you have context here? I think I think for each kid it's individual too, because like mm -hmm. I think I look at my kids and there's a, they're all different. Mm -hmm. So you almost have to observe more than you teach. Yeah, because you have to kind of see what they know, what they don't like, know. Learn them. Yes. Learn them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a really good way to put it. Mm -hmm. And then go, okay, this one needs a little help with this maybe. Yeah. Or maybe we have to teach this lesson. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, wow, that one smarter than me about that. I, yeah. I, like, I, I'm learning from them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. But I think, yeah, I think each kid can be kind of different too. Absolutely. To understand that. Yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, one tool parent, that's your job. All my kids is how to Photoshop funny <laughs> memes. I was hearing about this yesterday and That's yeah, they seem to all have tool. a, they, they all seem to have a passion for it, but in different ways, you know, yeah. like some are into speed, some are into like the real accuracy of it right, and right. the perspective, you know? Yeah. Like I think that's One of my really daughters can do it. Great. Like you can't tell that it was Photoshopped and you're like confused. Yeah, it's so accurate. And then uh, another one, Lennon will do it where it's so <laughs> horribly <laughs> done yeah, the that irony. it's hilarious. He's into irony. Right. <laughs> you know? So Photoshop, I think. No, the being serious, though, I mean, I think we all kind of learn things along the line, and I think it, it helps. Um, I think it's fascinating hearing from you and, like, other people, like, in different industries mm -hmm. about what that might be. <coughs> so I'm going to put you on the spot, Aaron. Okay. What would you tell your 17-year-old Aaron, mm -hmm. your 17-year-old self, 
that you know now that would you think would have been helpful to know back then? Hmm. I guess, um, you know, it kind of goes along with what we've sort of been talking about with the, the learning. I, something that's, that keeps occurring to me, no matter how long I've been doing this, is that I can always learn more and that I'm not done learning this, which is right. both um, humbling or I'm, it's an attempt to humble myself or whatever, but it's also kind of hopeful, you know, like like if something's missing, I can keep studying it or I can keep, you know, exploring it and finding new ways to do things or, um, but you're just never done. You don't ever mm. have to be finished. And, you know, it was my passion that got me into this situation in the first place. So it's kind of exciting to think that there's always something more to be learned about or explored or um but but also i think it's important to not view myself as being any kind of master you yep. know like i don't feel like i am i i don't want to be i want to be like i want things to be new because i think newness and creativity is like one of the most like miraculous gifts that we have in life you know to yep. discover something new or you know find something we didn't know we loved and then all of a sudden we have this whole new activity or whatever right. you know so I think you know when I was young I, I always kind of felt inferior that I felt like a lot of people were ahead of me in different ways mm -hmm. like um, Anna and I were talking today about singing and like getting to know our voices when we were younger and I I always felt like I had these major limitations vocally you know, there were things that I that wanted to... That blows me away. <laughs> well, there were things, your music. <laughs> but I, there were things I wanted to be able to do that I couldn't do, and I heard other people that could do them, and I thought, well, they just, they have the advantage. They're, they're going to be successful, and I, you know. And, but it just, it's about knowing yourself and then learning, you know, what's going to contribute to making yourself better. And hmm. just knowing that you're, you know, you haven't figured it all out, and you don't have to have... You know, the, you make a lot of assumptions when you're young, I think, because you just see kind of, you know, different examples of things and you have no experience, so you can't <laughs> make the judgment. But I think if I, if I could tell myself, you know, just, you're, you're just going to get to know yourself better as time goes on. And right. that's a really great thing. That's awesome. I love, love, love that you said that. Cause oh, that, good. That is, <laughs> that exact concept is like a, is like a chapter in the book of Tool. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And then also, just sidebar before I go back into that, like, it's interesting you saying that you feel like you have limitations in your voice. So like, um, like imagine how I feel <laughs> compared to her voice. Uh, like your voice is like silk. Like, uh, <laughs> like, I mean, amazing, amazing, amazing. Thanks. Um, and like, I could only dream like. What I, you could do with that voice. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, <laughs> oh, my God. It, you might want to go in a diff different genre. I would definitely I don't know that to, your fans would, like. I don't know. But just to have that control, I would be, <laughs> I, I could make it work, I think, somehow. But <laughs> cheers. <coughs> cheers to that. Oh, cheers. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but back to um, what you were talking about was um, kind of my version of it is to, and, and we kind of <laughs> talked about it uh on another episode when we were talking about the belt system and like what with the way that I in, in my mind was that always stay a white belt is what oh, you're yeah. is what you're talking mm -hmm. about yeah exactly in, like in life like mm -hmm. you know like um, you're still discovering yeah you're always you're always learning and I think like I have a unique experience because I I didn't I had a I didn't I decided young that I wasn't gonna go to college mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and um, I was just gonna experience life and go do my thing or whatever and then I saw like I saw friends you know go to college and then get out of college and then kind of be like over learning like I'm done like I got my degree now I'm, mm -hmm. you know I'm just done and then they're so sick of they're so sick, sick of, of that environment of like right. to, you know, learning and going to doing this thing just to learn whatever and then it like almost stunted their growth and their curiosity maybe. because they were like i'm not i don't ha i can't learn i'm not gonna learn anything else i'm just gonna mm -hmm. now i i learned this and i'm gonna go and do this or whatever and then maybe like later in life they was like oh man i you know i should have kept an open mind so and yeah. i and i feel like i've always had that mindset of um of just trying to 
always be learning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and ABL. Then ABL. Um, <laughs> I, was give like, it I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> always be learning. Always be learning. <laughs> um, a great, a great, one of my favorite stories of this is, um, is um, George St. Pierre. I'm, did I say that right? Yeah, yeah George St. Pierre. <laughs> I was in that came up my mouth. I was like, who's that guy? <laughs> Yes, George, George St. Pierre, who is a MMA fighter. an MMA fighter, oh, okay. was a UFC champion. Sounds high. like a painter. Yes. <laughs> He's a French-Canadian. Mm. Um, and basically, he he's, you know, he's a black belt in several mm. different um, martial, arts. martial arts. And you can pretty much assume that he walks into any martial arts academy in the world, and he's the guy, he can beat the shit out of anybody in the room. Yeah, and right? they all know who he is. <laughs> and they all, you all know who he is, right? Yeah. Like, he's that savage. But but he goes if he gonna if he's gonna go and train somewhere else he puts on a gi and puts on a white belt. No way. Yeah. So that he walks into the gym, letting them it's know like, I'm here to learn. What is that show called? The um, Undercover Stormy? Boss. <laughs> What's it called? Undercover, undercover Boss. Undercover yeah. Boss. He's, he's like Undercover like Boss <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of scary in a little bit. Where he's like, oh yeah, there's a white new white belt. You go. Yeah. Go kill, go kill that guy. He's Dojo Storming him. He yeah. Exactly. If you don't know who he is, hey, you're that trouble. guy uh, looks familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Seems better than the white yeah. he would have to go undercover like to not be recognized that yeah you're saying? exactly <laughs> but you know he walks in and like he's every you know he's you know if he's going to go and train with a new a new coach or whatever he's coming as white belts just sending that message like i'm oh, here to learn yeah i'm gonna it doesn't matter if i can beat you or not mm -hmm. i can learn something from you that's really admirable yeah exactly yeah and, and i do and love that thinking yeah and um yeah i think that that's uh I don't know. I think that's it's an important life lesson. It's, it's a very good life lesson. Yeah, you can always learn, even you know, always. Yeah, you, yeah. If you if if you shut that off, it's just you're just done. Well, and there's so much. I don't know. I just think there's so much like hopefulness and joy in it too. Yeah. Because I mean, I think like newness is something that is one of our fundamental yeah. yearnings in yeah. life. Yeah. Is for something to. We are always looking for new things. Yeah. Right. And if you decide that you know everything you need to know about something. Yeah. You're you're missing the fun. Yeah, you're missing I think out so. a lot. Yep. Yeah. Hundred percent. Awesome. Well, thanks, Aaron, for joining us. And oh, you're welcome. Drinking some beer. Thank and you for the pizza and the some beer. Food. John did use his catch lines. Let's drink some beer. Let's drink some beer. Let's eat some food. Let's eat some food. Yeah. We'll add it in post. <laughs> <laughs> Josh will fly it in. Thanks, Josh. That was awesome. Yeah. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. One more time. Yep. Cheers. One more time. <laughs> We all pick different beers. You guys <laughs> pick the same one. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs>